Happy Aloha Friday. Welcome to another episode of Ask Cindy Connected Live. Aloha, this is Cindy, your host over at Ask Cindy Connector Live. Make sure that you go to TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook and hit that like button. Go to YouTube at Ask Cindy Connector Live. Subscribe and comment, and I'll gift you a three-night hotel stay. If you subscribe, comment, and share this very video onto Facebook, I'll gift you a five-night stay. So you pay for the tax, I cover the hotel. So what is this show about? Ask Cindy Connector Live. Several years ago, one of my friends started calling me Ask Cindy Connector, and I started a Facebook page where I would share what my friends are doing, whether you're a small business or you're in network marketing or any kind of small business. I like to pay it forward and connect you to my sphere of influence. I'm also a podcast coach over at Ask Cindy Connector Live, and if you want to be on top of follow up with your clients, check out surfcityalohamarketing.com. So today I wanna to do a big plug to National Day Calendar. You can see the calendar right behind me there. And if you contact me here on Facebook, I am doing a drawing for a 2022 National Day Calendar. So make sure that you go to nationaldaycalendar.com. And coming up in August, I'm actually speaking at the National Day Calendar Summit in Las Vegas. So today I have my friend, Lewis. He is one of my favorite chiropractors and an amazing surfer here in Huntington Beach. And we're gonna talk about his business today. So welcome to the show, doctor. Thanks, Cindy, it's great to be here. So tell my audience uh, your backstory. Yeah, so uh, I was born and raised in Spain, late wow. 70s, uh, mid to late 70s. Uh, my dad got stationed in Spain. My dad was American and he's in the military, in the Navy. He gets stationed in Spain and meets a beautiful local Spanish girl. And I'm a product of that. So uh, I was a Navy brat, lived in Spain from uh, the time I was born till I basically went kindergarten through 12th grade at a Department of Defense school in the South of Spain. My birth town is Rota, it's a Naval base. And I lived in a nearby town called Chipiona. Lived there wow. until I was 17. And at 17, I was fortunate enough to uh, have the opportunity to come to the States and find my little piece of the American dream. So I enrolled at University of Florida, did my bachelor's degree in biochemistry and human nutrition. And then I decided that uh, I'd come out to California. I was lucky enough to be on the University of Florida surf team. And we came out to California for NSSA championships. And uh, I, I remember we were driving in a van and we made a, sp a stop on Maine and PCH here in Huntington. And I looked around and I saw the palm trees waving. I saw the perfect waves, the sun in the sky, and it was love at first sight. So came uh, enrolled at uni uh, Southern California University of Health Sciences, which is the closest okay. chiropractic school out in Whittier. And finished that 2001 at the end of 2001, opened my practice immediately thereafter, and we've been uh, going strong since. So let's talk about your website. So this is the website. Uh, tell my audience all about this and how you educate your clients. Sure. So we started, I myself am a chiropractor, and we started as a small chiropractic office, and then as we grew, and we were able to add services that I felt kind of made sense to um, my vision was having a multidisciplinary wellness center. So we started with just chiropractic. And as soon as we were able to, we added massage therapy. Then we added a physical therapist. Then we added uh, Pilates. So we have one-on-one -on -one Pilates in the office. We also have cold laser therapy for soft tissue injuries. And then uh, most recently, we just added an intersegmental traction table as well. So we've got a little bit of everything all within the, the scope and the space of the natural health care, natural health care and wellness field. And it's all based and, you know, predicated. The, the foundation and the fundamentals is all uh, on chiropractic. So let's talk about your blog. Sure. 
So what do you have here on your blog? So I write a blog occasionally on different topics. Um, a lot of times I have conversations over and over and over with patients. So when I find myself having that conversation for the umpteenth time, I just write a blog about it. So that instead of having to regurgitate that hundreds and hundreds of times, I give people something that they can refer to. And you know, we, we tend to remember, I think it's 20% of what we hear. And a lot of people tend to be visual learners. So I'll discuss this with them, educate them on it, but then I'll refer them to the blog so they can go back and when they're uh, on their own time, they can read it and get even more information on it. So let's talk about desk jobs like myself on the computer 24 seven. Let's Absolutely. talk about the diagnosis you gave me about what, three, four weeks ago. Absolutely. So when you came in, you had talked about some of the tension and things that, you know, kind of afflicted you from being on the computer for so long. There's actually a condition now known as tech neck. And what tech neck is, wow. it's basically very easily identifiable because you can take an x-ray mm -hmm. and instead of having a nice C-shaped curve in the neck, when you look at it from the side, it's completely straight. Typically what people with tech neck suffer from are things like neck pain, stiffness, tension, headaches. If it's really bad, it can also cause things like migraines or even numbness into the upper extremities. And it's something that's interesting because when I started as a chiropractor, I didn't see all that much of it. But as technology, especially cell phones, have become more prevalent, you know, I've seen a much higher incidence. And now I'm actually more surprised when someone comes in and they have a curve in the, their neck rather than not. So it's something that, uh, you know, is, is hitting us at, a, at real pandemic numbers. Let's talk migraine. Mm -hmm. What do you want to know? We can talk all you want about migraines. How you could alleviate the pain for those okay. who are suffering from chronic migraines. Sure. So as you can imagine, headaches and migraines are one of the most common things that I see in my office. The thing that makes headaches and especially migraines tricky is there could be a multitude of causes. Uh, one of them that's really common is what's called upper cervical dysfunction, where you have some misalignment or some fixated joints in the top part of the neck and the cervical spine. And that can lead to headaches and tension, blurry vision, tired vision, migraines. The thing with migraines is it could also be caused by other things. You know, there's also migraines that are gut mediated. Um, that's why a lot of times they tell you to eliminate certain foods that you may be allergic to. Red wine, certain alcohols, beer, red meat, eggs tend to be some common triggers for some people, dairy, gluten, things like that. So, when someone comes in, the key factor is to identify what the root cause is and then address that. For me as a chiropractor, if the root cause is related to the upper cervical spine, it tends to be something that we have a lot of success with. If it's something that's more gut mediated, then in addition to clearing the cervical spine and correcting those misalignments, I'll also point you in the direction of someone that can help you with the gut portion, be it a... Um, wellness minded medical doctor, a naturopath or someone within that scope. Let's talk knee pain. Yeah, so there's, a, again, you'll hear me say this over and over about finding the root cause. So a lot of times with knee pain, it can be anything from kids that are having growing pains to adults that have had sports injuries. Uh, a lot of times, uh, one thing that happens is over time, you'll get a discrepancy in your leg length, meaning one hip could be a little higher than the other. Mm -hmm. And instead of carrying a 50-50 weight distribution, that can be thrown off. So instead of 50-50, you might be 60-40. And as you can imagine, the side that's carrying the more weight over time, you can develop a lot of uh, tension, inflammation, and over the long haul, if it's not corrected, it can lead to other things. So that's why it's important to see a chiropractor or especially someone who can focus on the structural component so that you can correct that before it becomes an issue. A lot of times people come in and they'll say, hey doc, um, I've been having chronic knee pain. I've had it for three or four or five years. I've gone to the best of the best. I've gone to you know, orthopedists and pain management docs and I've done the cortisone injections and everything under the sun, but my knee pain's still there. And the first thing I do is I'll put them on a device that actually measures their left to right weight distribution and sure enough, a lot of times we'll find massive differences. So if you can imagine someone who's 100 pounds, instead of carrying 50-50, 
sometimes they'll be carried, you know, 55, 45 in the side that's carrying that excess 10 pounds. There's a lot more wear and tear on that side of the body and the knee, oh, be it that wow. it's a weight bearing joint tends to wear and tear more over time. So if that's left uncorrected, it can lead to long-term pain. Wow. Cause I had a torn meniscus and I had to have knee surgery on my left, on my left knee. So yeah, that's something that I want to look at as well, because now I have arthritis and as you know, I'm, I'm just learning to surf so that when I surf, I actually had to do the two-step pop-up. I had to go to my knee first and then pop fully up. I can't do the full pop-up. So let's talk about ankle pain, which I have that as well. Oh, so do I. I've <laughs> been a soccer player my whole life. So I've had every imaginable ankle injury under the sun and then some, including one that I'm still nursing right now. Uh, one of the things that happens is if it's a sports injury and you fall and tweak your ankle, then obviously, you know, it gets inflamed. Uh, you do the rice, rest, ice, compress, elevate. Um, even though there's kind of new thoughts on that, now it's MEF, oddly enough, which stands for mobilize, um, elevate, traction, and heat. So go figure on which one of those two is right. You know, even the so-called experts can't seem to agree. But bottom line is, when you treat the ankle, you have to look for the same things that we were talking about with the knee. You want to make sure that your hips are balanced, that you're not carrying excess weight on that affected side. And then you want to address it. Ankle pain could be due to a lot of things. It could be just the most common thing tends to be an ankle sprain from a sports injury or just from stepping off a curb oddly or something like that but it could also be other things. So for the sports type, structural type injuries, you know, we can help you with that. And when I find something that doesn't respond to what I do, luckily after 20 something years doing this, I know the best orthopedist, foot specialist, podiatrist, you name it, I can, I can pretty much find you the best of the best. Just like you're a connector, I like to be a connector within the uh, medical field. That's awesome. Yeah, because I, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out because I had a really bad slip and fall in Las Vegas back in 14. And even when I um, surfed with my instructor, it still was really swollen. I couldn't understand. And I, I do believe it was because I just got diagnosed with that liver disease last year. And I'm eating healthy and supplements and, you know, working out and all that. Sure. But I, I really do believe that it was the liver issue that caused my ankle to swell because it was almost like edema. It was really bad. And there's, and that's where, you know, a lot of times, obviously when someone comes in and I see edema, that's outside, my, that's outside my scope of expertise. So in that case, even though I can identify it, I'd point you in the direction of a professional that specializes in those things. You know, as a, as a chiropractor, more specifically a structural chiropractor, I like to focus on the structure and how the structure can improve the function. But then there's a lot of things that I see that are outside my scope of expertise. And for those things, I'll point you in the right direction and say, hey, Cindy, you should go see, you know, your GP for some labs or some blood work. Or, hey, Cindy, you should go see an orthopedist. Or, okay. Cindy, you should go see a rheumatologist. You know, so based on some of the things that we find, if it's something that I can't help you with, I'll at least point you in the right direction. Oh, that's amazing. Well, lastly, let's talk about sciatica. So... The thing with sciatica is it's a catch-all term basically for a pinched or irritated or compressed sciatic nerve. It can be caused by a lot of different things from a disc herniation to a tight piriformis muscle. The piriformis muscle is a little fan-shaped muscle underneath the glute, kind of in the hip, low back area. Mm -hmm. And in a significant percentage of the population, it's actually pierced by the sciatic nerve. So if this is the piriformis, the sciatic nerves can go right through it. So anytime that you have a tight sciatic or a tight piriformis, it'll actually pinch the sciatic nerve. A lot of times you can uh, make that better with just simple stretches with home things that I actually talk about in the blog. Or if it's something else, let's say that we stretch our piriformis and we do the ice and heat and you do the massage and we adjust you and you're still not getting better, then we would probably send you for an MRI. And if the MRI comes back and you've got disc herniations, we would address those. And that could be either through cold laser therapy, if they're smaller, and if they're big enough, I might have to send you to a spinal surgeon for consultation. Because so sometimes there are disc injuries that are big enough and severe enough where chiropractic laser therapy may not be the best treatment option. So then you'd want to go see someone who specializes in those types of injuries and cases. 
So how about in my case, because I have a severe trauma in my lower back from, you know, previous years. Uh, what do you suggest uh, for my treatment? The main thing is always to assess and address. So I find that a lot of people have tried to address it without properly assessing it. So the strategy that they take is, you know, let's throw a bunch of stuff against a wall and see what sticks rather than really crawling deep into the rabbit hole, doing all the tests, taking the x-rays, doing the MRI, you know, and I understand that sometimes there's factors and circumstances, you know, an MRI is an expensive test. So sometimes a person may not have five or $600 to do an MRI. And unfortunately, you know, so these tests are prohibitive in cost. So a lot of times you kind of have to work with what, what you have in front of you. The good news is in my office, we have x-ray on site. We can do x-ray uh, extremely, extremely reasonably for a fraction of what you'd pay in the hospital. And we get immediate results. And with x-ray, we can solve a lot of issues. And sometimes when I find things that are outside my scope, I'll point you in the right direction. And sometimes I'll say, hey, you know what? We got to do that, that MRI. It is important if my suspicion is high enough that you have you know, a significantly sized disc herniation, then that MRI is going to be crucially important because you're not going to see these things on, on plain x-ray. So in my case, we're going to go for treatment and just assess it, you know, as we go along. Yes. And what we're going to do is with you, we've kind of already established what we think it is. And I say think, you know, to a certain degree of certainty. And if it gets better, which from our conversation prior to this podcast, you know, you were saying that you're already improving, you're seeing less frequency, less intensity of pain. Those are all signs that we're moving in the right direction, albeit, you know, in a perfect world, it would happen faster and overnight. But, you know, one of the things that's important is to realize that uh, healing is, it's a process. It's not an event. So it takes time. And another thing is that healing is never linear. So in a perfect world, you know, your pain would go in a straight line, but that's not what happens because we're human and, you know, just life happens. We lift things, we sleep awkwardly, we sit too long. Uh, we do sports and not rest when we should be resting. So these things always cause it to be, you know, a series of peaks and valleys where some days you're going to feel great. So you go out and push yourself. And then the next day you wake up and you feel like you're back to square one. So those are just the natural incidences of, of what I see on a day-to-day -day basis. So before we go into sports injury, and then we'll close out the show. Sure. So before I go to a surf lesson, what is the best advice to get an adjustment from you? Because in the past, I've, I've seen someone the day before, and I was so sore, I could barely even pop up. What's your suggestion for people who surf and who uh, have a chiropractor? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. So typically, there's not going to be a whole lot of soreness if you've been getting adjusted regularly. But if it's the first time, it's almost like a workout, right? If you haven't worked out in a long time and you go hit that first workout, the day after, you're going to be sore. And if you're not, you just didn't push yourself hard enough, right? So you want to have a small amount of soreness is actually a good thing after a workout. With an adjustment, it's similar. Sometimes the adjustment, what it does is it not only aligns the spine, but it also introduces movement into areas of the spine that aren't moving properly. Also, there's what's called adhesions. Adhesions are basically parts where the joint is stuck. And when you get adjusted, you break those adhesions and release and increase and improve mobility. But obviously, there's going to be a little bit of pain afterwards. When I say a little bit, we're talking mild soreness. If you really need to, you can use a little bit of ice, a little bit of heat, 10 to 15 minutes each. And usually within a few hours or even a day or two, it's back to normal as far as the pain goes. So as far as the surf community, what, what kind of treatment do you do for local surfers here in Huntington Beach? So with surfers, a lot of what we see are ankle sprains, knee sprains, you know, especially now that surfing has progressed so rapidly, you know, in the 80s, surfing was three to the beach, three turns to the beach. And now surfing has become basically acrobatics. You know, you're talking mo a modern day surfer is a gymnast that happens to have a surfboard under his feet. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot more injuries that have to do with ankle sprains and knee sprains and shoulder sprains because the limits of what people are doing on waves has been pushed to a level that even 10 years ago had never been seen. So a lot of sprains and strains, a lot of contusions, bumps and bruises, you know, and also head injuries. You know, head injuries are starting to be more common. 
uh, not just because people are pushing themselves harder and into bigger waves in more extreme conditions, but also we have improved technology that can identify these types of head injuries. Yeah, and a lot of them don't even practice the etiquette. They'll yeah take your wave when it's your wave. <laughs> Correct. So you have to come on my other show to talk about. I was going to say that's a, that's another topic that uh, yeah that definitely merits a lot of uh, a lot of discussion. Exactly. So this is the fun part of the show. Let's do some shout outs. Who would you like to shout out today? First of all, you because. Okay. Uh, Ever since I've met you, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing how the, the level of, of connection that you establish with the people you work with, both clients and people that you do business with. Uh, I remember within, uh, I think, not even 24 hours of you coming into my office, we had a gift bag and we had gummy bears and we had all sorts of goodies that definitely make you unforgettable. So once you meet Cindy, you definitely will not, be, will not forget Cindy. She's... She's the connector and then some, and, and I've been taking mental notes. You know, I even shared that with my staff. Um, besides that, just the whole, the whole Hunt, Huntington Beach and Costa Mesa community, been here, always, uh, always loved it. Felt like home since 2000 when I moved here. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Of course, my family, my wife, Denise, my daughters, Lucia and Lila, and then my whole family in Spain, uh, my mother, is uh, still living in Spain. My dad's in Florida. So much love to, to the whole family. And I want to do a shout out again to uh, Rocky McKinnon for connecting me. I was, well, Rocky. he actually uh, mentioned it several months ago and I, I remembered, oh yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. Definitely. Yeah. Cause it's, I, I, I don't know. It's just, you can see any kind of chiropractor, but it's the rapport that you have to, I mean, with your patients, like right out of the gate was, yeah, we didn't even know each other 10 minutes in, in the first visit and I felt comfortable. And so now I can get my neck worked on. That's, that's right. the one thing I got to, I got to trust my doctor to, you know, get my neck worked on just like when we get our teeth done, you know, we got to have a rapport with our dentist and stuff like that. Absolutely. So let's do a little call to action. Um, what would you like to say about your wellness company, your chiropractic business um, that can get people to connect with you, build rapport and do business with you? Sure. The first thing is we, we always offer a complimentary evaluation as far as uh, actually a complimentary um, consultation. So if anyone wants to either email me or call into the office, it can be done virtually over the phone or over technology, whether it's Zoom or FaceTime, anything like that. I've done a ton of those. And then also we can also do it in, per in person in my office. So my office is Atlas Wellness Center in Costa Mesa. Website is www.atlaswellness.com. And basically all the information you need is on there. We have blogs, we have information all about, about all sorts of conditions. And if you want to find me on social media, uh, I'm very active on Facebook. And if you ever want to send me an email or a messenger um, message and ask any questions, I'm always happy to talk to people, point them in the right direction. A lot of times people don't want to make the commitment of going to a doctor's office because they don't even know what doctor to go to. Do I go to a physical therapist, an orthopedist, a chiropractor, a sports doctor? You know, a lot of times people are frozen by in inaction because they don't know. So send me a message and I'm happy to point you in the right direction, answer any questions, and uh, always happy to, to do that. If you refer anyone or if anyone comes into my office from, from Cindy, we'll do what, uh, the first visit special for $80, typically it's 125 and that includes all your x-rays, your examination with the doctor, your first treatment and a follow-up visit. So that's a good way to kind of get your foot in the door, get some questions answered and, you know, kind of start your path towards restoring your health, your flexibility, your mobility and regaining your life. Awesome. So do you have any tips for small business owners to build relationships with each other just as a networking tip of the day? Absolutely. Number one is create a sphere of influence that includes people like you. You're going to have people that are just natural connectors. And those are the people that you want to not just establish, but also nurture a good relationship with, because ultimately it comes down to being in people's minds. So when someone thinks marketing, Cindy, the connector needs to pop on the, you know, on that mental screen. When someone thinks chiropractic, you know, I hope I pop up on their screen. One of the things that I do, for example, is I help a lot of people with car accidents and personal injury work. So I've always made it a point 
you know, in California, the stat is that every six to seven years, you're going to get in a car accident. It's not if, it's when. So I always make sure to all my patients that when that happens, mm -hmm. that happens to be one of my specialties. And that's where I like coming in and helping them. So just stay in, on, in the uh, top of people's minds by being present, consistently providing good content and just give, give, give. Mm -hmm.